You're listening to Partners United on Accountability, brought to you by Shehu Musa Yaradua Foundation. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Larry Suraj and I am the Executive Director of the Human and Environmental Development Agenda at the Resource Center. It engages citizens on core human development issues, including agriculture, food security, climate change, human rights, public sector accountability, and electoral reform. Heda and the Yaradua Foundation are part of a community of civil society actors working to promote accountability practice through the Partners United uh, platform. Joining me today to have the discussion on the topical issue, uh, Data for Accountability, uh, is Mr. Dakbo Olon Riyomi, uh, a veteran journalist, human rights activist, uh, publisher, I can say a reporter as well, based on the experience on some of the groundbreaking reports that uh, has been associated with Mr. Dakbo Olon Riyomi. Mr. Olon Riyomi has also been part of several initiatives leading to quite a whole lot of groundbreaking efforts at promote accountability, good governance, freedom of expression, and empowerment of journalists across the country and in West Africa. Mr. Loriomi was part of the founding member of the news family of the next uh, newspaper before becoming the publisher of Premium Times uh, News Family that has a Premium Times newspaper, the Premium Times Center for Investigative Journalism, the project called Udeme, and also Dubawa. Can you help us do a brief explanation on data for accountability and the concept of it? I think when we're talking uh, about data accountability, what comes to mind is how we use information that is popularly available and uh, accessible uh, by citizens and uh, institutions uh, for promoting transparency and accountability in a very general sense. And then this will be media in a sense and uh, civil society organizations. I think in broad sense, what we'll then be talking about is how uh, to make meaning and uh, substance of a democracy and how to give that democracy uh, a qu- consequential meaning to the extent that people have the information they need as at when due to be able to improve life, to hold that democracy accountable, uh, to ensure that uh, key actors of democracy, both individually and institutionally, uh, come to effective reckoning. Uh, but above all, that information that can help the development of uh, citizens in every walk of their life um, has true meaning, not just paper meaning as it were. I think basically this is what we will then mean when we're talking of data accountability is just to make information available and truly substantive for us to give democracy its true meaning and development uh, a true purpose. Thank you. This, this is very interesting. You've listed some of the actors that have been talking about the media and the civil society and even government. Can we get more um, from you on the list of those that are considered actors in the issue of data and accountability and even data for accountability? And also, if we have really embraced the concept of the data for accountability as actors in the system. Thank you so much. Sometimes the way we present the case for data uh, tends to mystify it as if it's something very big, something very new. Indeed, data is no more than just the information of everyday life. True, it's important then that we understand that even if information is available, we need to be able to present information in a way that will serve a particular kind of purpose. Uh, so when we're talking of data in that regard, uh, I think it's always important to lay the context very clearly, uh, especially now that we're talking of it in the sense of uh, accountability. Uh, I think it's important for us to understand the political environment around which we're discussing uh, data. And 
you know, the, the environment can change. So for our own purpose these days, we're talking of data in the context of a democracy. Uh, we're talking data for the purpose of development. Uh, so to that extent, um, everybody's an actor. On the one hand, you have international actors from the development sectors. Uh, these would be institutions like the World Health Organization, Food and Agricultural Organization, the World Bank, um, the African Development Bank, the UN itself, the UNICEF, the African Union, the ECOWAS, and so on and so forth. The institution of the Nigerian Bureau on Statistics and institutions like Nigerian Population Commission, the uh, Identity Management Commission, National Communication Commission, and, and so on and so forth, the Science and uh, Technology Agency of the government. These are key institutions that if you have to grade national actors, you then put them at, say, something like a prime A uh, actor's role. They are just coming to life. And, you know, if you look at their books, their acts, I mean, the statutory uh, language of these agencies, you see, see that we are at the water's edge of data awareness and data use. But the most important, though, is between civil society and citizens, because just as civil society plays its role in every other regard, it's the third actor in this platform, if you like. and. Civil so society needs to uh, catch up and turn data that is available and convert them very quickly, both for advocacy and the empowerment of citizens so that they can make more concrete, substantive demands on government. Needless to say that for institutions like the media that have statutory rule, uh, data awareness is still very low. And that's really making the whole problem of the point you raise about awareness and uh, and so on a little bit uh, problematic and challenging. But it's growing by the day, better late than never. I think that's the point that we we really have to um, start this uh, discussion. In addition to your mentioning of the constitutional provision with reference to Section Twenty Two. And section 39, uh, can we look at some of the possible policies and framework that, that are existing within the country that enables the concept of data for accountability and the current state of some of these uh, policies and legal framework, uh, if we're actually making any good use of them? Yes, I think discussion around uh, data, just like the discussion around any information. So let's now say structured and unstructured data must start, let's say at the national level, it must start from the constitution. The two key articles in the constitution that gives basis for uh, data accountability, uh, section 22 and section 39. Of interest though, is section 37 of the constitution because it makes a case for privacy that is that's at the, at the point of usage of data and at the, also at the point of the acquisition of data, because 37, of course, is dealing with privacy rights. But besides that, there are other instruments. Um, the most uh, interesting of all is the Nigerian data protection right. It, it's, a, it, it's a policy that's not really moved. As you know, it's been moved into an attempt to create a law out of the data privacy and freedom uh, bill, which has been uh, famously called the uh, HR 490, has been dangling between parliament and the executive, and the president has been unwilling to sign it. But then there's the agency called the uh, NIMSI, which is the... uh, if you like the identity management agency for all citizens uh, of the country, I think one 
uh, other law that we need to bear in mind will then be the INEC Act, INEC being the uh, the Electoral Commission's Act, because then in the exercise of democracy, this is the agency that plays the role of the key regulator, and then it houses uh, a lot of our uh, our data. Uh, the same is true of the Population Act. It's another federal law which also provides um, regulatory power over our identity and therefore our data as uh, persons. Um, in between all this is a, a general problem. The problem being that um, citizens have not effectively taken hold and control of uh, their own right over data. That's why the data privacy and freedom uh, bill ought to be passed. Uh, let me just talk of two or three very quick uh, laws that uh, uh, pose problems for citizens in this regard. Oh, the first is what is generally called the uh, Cyber Crime Act, which is a law presumably supposed to help regulate um, the nefarious activities of uh, cyber criminals. In the age of digital, a lot of the crimes that we are used to have now moved online. They've moved to cyberspace, and they certainly can be far more lethal than what we have. There's a the need for a law uh, to follow the crime. The other one is the TPA, what's called the uh, the, the Terrorism Act, uh, which is... Uh, um, given the difficulties in the country today with extreme expression of identity, either in ethno-national or religious terms, uh, we've had a case of insurgency that is almost blown up the upper corner of the country. So you cannot ignore that fact that this is a, a problem. But the exercise and the need for uh, the liberties and freedom of citizens is seem to be totally ignored within that the making of that law. So that's the kind of danger that we have. An agency, for instance, like NIMC, uh, you'll be surprised about the kind of uh, access that it grants to so-called third-party institutions that you don't know. It's not defined in the law. Ultimately, of course, this third party uh, are enabled to have control over our data. If you probe further, you find that almost invariably and always this is a pathway for security people to have access to. I must say we really appreciate how much you have assisted in details highlighting critically some of these issues uh, that are associated with data and also the actors that are responsible for some of the activities. But it would be important to borrow from your own experience uh, as part of your organization and also your personal experience in the field to look at uh, what has been the experience uh, in, in your embracing of the, this concept of data accountability uh, and also look at some of the positives and the challenges that you must have encountered in dealing with this issue. In closing remark, we would appreciate to take recommendations from you uh, for some of the actors that, that you have listed and the other ones that are not in your list. This would assist us in uh, jointly advancing the use of data for accountability and promoting good governance in the country. I think it's important to bear in mind that when we're speaking of data in this regard, really, it's important uh, to also understand the transition that has happened uh, in the general technological environment of, of information processing by which you say the transition to digital. Uh, uh, effectively, most of the world's population transited to digital in the 90s, and in Nigeria specifically, it's 1995. After this date, a whole lot of what we do as a media organization changed. Basically, we do three broad things. We collect information, we process it, and then, of course, we share this information. The age of digital has transformed how we do these things from an analog age, uh, which then imposes on us as media organization to understand that transition to digital has renatured our identity in a way. 
And one way to really appreciate that is to see that media now finds itself at the interface of technologies uh, than at any other time in the history of that institution. So for you to do effective media, we at least in our own organization, the first thing that we all knew was that we have to really create cubicles around which we have to ourselves extract and structure data so as to be able to hold people and government uh, accountable. We have the institution in-house, which is called Udeme, which is uh, a social accountability uh, platform and which deals with uh, three key areas. Uh, it's development data, but mostly around constituency uh, projects, around capital projects, then the ecology fund. This, if you look at it, is 40% of our annual uh, budgeting. So we try to focus a whole lot on that uh, through the UDMA program. UDMA being uh, a term uh, from most of the South-South uh, uh, language groups of Nigeria to mean accountability in itself. This is where work has to be done. Luckily, the admin groups have shown great pathway in this regard. Look at just the kind of impressive work that you guys are doing with respect to uh, anti-corruption work that you are doing at HEDA. Look at what Clean Foundation is doing with police accountability. Look at what Budget is doing with budgetary accountability and literacy. Look at what Data Fight is doing. Data Fight is doing tremendous uh, the important work in the whole area of data and development. Uh, uh, and one can go on and on and on accountability lab. You see the kind of work that they are doing. Um, so this is the area that we really have to invest more in to recognize that uh, civil society as media, data has come, that is structuring of information uh, has become far more important way that we can do this work. And the platform, the key for doing that will also be for an awareness of the, the central role that technology has come to play, has renatured uh, our identity and the way we need to work to the extent that we are actually small technology companies, not pretending to uh, call yourself uh, tech giants, but that you are really small technology companies um, if you want to truly uh, do the work of accountability in an age of digital. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dakbolo Yami, for uh, joining us today. It's been a great delight and pleasure uh, to learn from your wealth of experience and knowledge and also uh, the level at which you have elucidated on some of those key issues and how much you have also uh, assisted uh, the listeners in understanding that we are all actors in the field and the generation, the storage, the management, the dissemination of data is not only a function of government or even intergovernmental agencies, but of every citizen and also act. We're more than happy that we've provided this opportunity for the listeners, even though we can take our questions, but the opportunity to listen to you uh, expatiate on these issues, break down some of these naughty areas of understanding the issue of data and also the generation of data. Sometimes uh, the classification of data, uh, which really should not be the case in many instances where they are used for uh, the support of promotion uh, of good governance in the system. Uh, on behalf of HEDA Resource Center and the Yaradua Foundation, in, in our Partners United Forum, we, we are more than grateful uh, for your time and for your support in this regard. Uh, to our listeners, every opportunity must be taken to expand on this issue, promote good governance, and bring everybody together, all the actors in the areas of accountability and also promotion of it. So it is on this note that I say thank you to every listeners and also promise on behalf of the partners our engagement of these issues with different resource persons that will be invited to join us and keep looking forward to the next episode. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye. 
To join the conversation about accountability in Nigeria, visit partnersunited.org. You can also visit report.corruptionanonymous.org to blow the whistle on any perceived corrupt act or to make a report on accountability or governance issues in Nigeria.